Good morning, and uh, welcome this morning to another new week, July the 26th, 2021, uh, to Peace Through the Word, coming to you this morning from my office at Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church in Benson, Arizona, and so good to welcome you this morning after a very rainy uh, weekend with uh, a lot of uh, rain that we received uh, over the last three days. Uh, we really needed it here in the southern Arizona deserts, <clears throat> and so it was a real blessing, but we had flash floods and so on and so forth, and so as a result, our worship service yesterday did not get recorded uh, for virtual uh, visual. Uh, so we apologize for that. We had a lot of people that weren't able, excuse me, to make it due to flash flooding and so on and so forth. So we uh, uh, just did not get that. My brothers and sisters, so good to welcome you this morning. And uh, Arthur Fennell, good to see you chiming in from uh, Salem, Oregon. Thank you so much for your partnership and all of you worldwide for chiming in uh, regularly uh, to this uh, piece of ministry. Um, this morning, my brothers and sisters, we're going to again visit with uh, our theologian C.F.W. Wather. He's going to be talking about how Jesus feeds hungry people. So are you hungry this morning? <laughs> Well, maybe not. You know, I've had breakfast, so I'm really not all that hungry. Well, there's different kinds of hunger. You know, there's physical hunger, and then there's spiritual hunger. So let me ask you this. Are you hungry spiritually for the things of God? Unfortunately, brothers and sisters, most people aren't either. They're not hungry for that either. Which is tragic because that has eternal consequences. All right, so we're going to be looking at that this morning, praying that that's going to bless you tremendously as we come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to open up our time together this morning by sharing with you Psalm 32. Pray that this Psalm will bless you, strengthen you, encourage you, comfort you, and give you real peace as well. So the Psalmist says this, he says, blessed is the one whose transgressions is forgiven whose sin is covered. Your sins are covered. Covered with what? The blood of Jesus. <laughs> okay? So blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. But when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as the heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover my iniquity. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters they shall not reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Be not like a horse or a mule without understanding, which must be curbed with bit and bridle. Otherwise, it just does what it wants to do. Or it will not stay near you. Many are the sorrows of the wicked. But steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. That's the consequence of not being hungry spiritually. So be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. So let's see how Dr. Martin Luther prays this particular psalm. He says, O God, our heavenly Father, with, with whom is grace and much forgiveness, be merciful to us who were born in sin and cannot but sin and fall short every day. Forgive us our many transgressions and account them against us no more, but make us your heirs through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, who was delivered into death for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Amen. 
Doesn't get any better than that, brothers and sisters. <laughs> it really doesn't. Well, <clears throat> my brothers and sisters, I want to share with you the beautiful worship setting called Matins. Got to get some water. <clears throat> water. <laughs> so I pray that that's going to bless you. So, O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouths will declare your praise. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver us. Make haste to help us, O oh Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, for he made it. In his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, in the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O come, let us worship him. So, brothers and sisters, the passage of Scripture I want to share with you comes from St. Mark, chapter 8, beginning in verse 5. And this is the account of Jesus feeding many people. And uh, so listen to this account, if you would, beginning in verse 5. Jesus says, um, and he asked them, how many loaves do you have? They said, seven. And he directed the crowd to sit down on the ground and he took the seven loaves, and having given thanks, he broke them and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And they set them before the crowd. And they had a few small fish. And having blessed them, he said that these also should be set before them. And they ate and were satisfied. And they took up the broken pieces left over, seven baskets full. And there were about 4,000 people. And he sent them away. And immediately he got into the boat with his disciples and went to the district of Dalmanutha. So let's see how CFW Wather unpacks this passage of scripture for us this morning. It says, many who heard about the men, women, and children who braved the inhospitable terrain in the heat of the day and followed Christ in the wilderness to hear his word must have considered them to be fools. False saints would surely have come to this conclusion, but not Christ. He was pleased with the people's zeal, which had been awakened by God himself. Therefore, when their need arose, he said, I have compassion on the crowd. And he ordered the people to sit down. The people whose faith had been strengthened by what they had heard, obeyed and sat at Christ's empty table. Christ then took the seven loaves of bread and a few fish that the disciples had left over for themselves. And he blessed them, broke them into pieces, and gave them to the disciples to distribute. And behold, in Christ's hands, the food miraculously multiplied. The distribution continued until every last one of the thousands gathered there had been fed. In fact, after all had eaten, Seven baskets full of fragments remained. All of the people departed, having been strengthened both in body and in spirit. Jesus still does that today. He feeds us with his bread and his blood in the sacrament of the altar. And that also multiplies. And he gives this to us every Sunday in worship, in divine worship. So like the people in today's reading, all true Christians gladly sacrifice the bodily for the spiritual. In this, the world may regard them as foolish, even hypocritical, since in order to pursue nourishment for their soul, they forget worldly cares. But their God and Savior regards them with pleasure. He does. What is foolish to the world 
is um, honorable to God. It's an incredible paradox. Who but their God and Savior regards them with pleasure? Who can be happier than the one who has God on his side, even if the whole world is against him? As St. Paul says, if God is for us, then who can be against us? The world may look on in malicious delight when zealous Christians lag behind in earthly things. Indeed, indeed, they may even come into need because they will not use sinful means to enrich themselves and because they sometimes spend considerable time feeding their souls, sharing their wealth with poor brothers and sisters, and spreading the kingdom of God. Yet, despite such discomforts, they do it. In their poverty, in temporary distress, Christ looks on them with great pity. He values every bodily deprivation they incur for the sake of the gospel. And that's what it looks like when Jesus said, to follow me, you need to deny yourself and take up your cross daily. Then and only then can you follow me. So he gives them in heavenly comfort and refreshment a hundred times what they lose in bodily and temporal things. He leads them through all their distress so that in the end they always have whatever they need. When distress is at its greatest, so is the help that he supplies. In them the old proverb is confirmed. Going to church does not delay, giving alms does not make one poor. If we want to better understand why true Christians are so willing to sacrifice bodily things for spiritual things, we must look from the vantage point of eternity, not from here. <clears throat> Whoever would prefer to give up something spiritual for something bodily in this life will come to regret his decision when he sees how little he has harvested in the world to come. Conversely, whoever gladly sacrifices the bodily for the spiritual in this life will find that even the most meager self-denial is capital to which God adds and for which God eternally pays interest. The nature of this interest is yet unknown to us, but we can be sure it will far exceed whatever we have measured out in the way of earthly sacrifice. An incredible blessing. So Jesus' arithmetic, his mathematics, is incredibly different with, with ours. So I pray that that will give you real, true, genuine peace as we begin this week together. So Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. So blessed be the Lord God of Israel. He has visited and redeemed his people. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets who have been since the world began that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation uh, to his people <clears throat> in the forgiveness of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, when the day shall dawn upon us from on high, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. So glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. So Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Brothers and sisters, this morning together as we begin our week together, may we pray the wonderful prayer our Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer, 
And together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So, O oh Lord, hear our prayers. Let our cries come to you. The Lord be with us and with our spirits. O oh Lord, our heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, thank you so much for joining us this morning for Peace Through the Word. Again, it always is, always will be incredibly appreciated. Lynn Lawrence, good to see you this morning from Biloxi, Mississippi. Good to see you. You're making your way. Are, are you making your way back west? And uh, so anyway, God's blessings to you. Penny Mars, good to see you chiming in as well, my dear. So I really pray that God's blessings be multiplied to you and in his abundance. We've got beautiful sunny skies today here in southern Arizona. Good day for flying. The wheels have been retracted, so have the flaps. And so I convey to each and every one of you tremendous blue skies.